Hey everybody, welcome to the Tuesday live show. So today it's all about the memes and I gotta tell you, memes have been absolutely crushing it. Memes, not just in, in, in crypto world, but also in traditional finance. And there was uh, a pretty good interview. This was uh, on CNBC. This was uh, Jay Clayton, who is the uh, former SEC and the predecessor of Gary Gensler. Not a big fan of Jay Clayton. He, of course, was the one that sued Ripple on his last days out of the office and then, you know, kind of let everything else into it. But there's going to be some things that he says in here that I wanted everybody to listen to and just to hear the hypocrisy that's coming out of this gentleman's mouth. And before we get into it, and what he's talking about of, uh, as far as like meme coins and what's going on, there was a post from Roaring Kitty. And if you don't know, there was a, a really good video, a really good movie that was put out. It's called Dumb Money. And you can find this on Netflix. And it was a, essentially what happened and how Roaring Kitty and a bunch of retail investors just like you and I uh, that came together and crushed Wall Street by investing into uh, AMC and GameStop and what they did and how they did it. It's a fascinating video. You could check it out. It's called Dumb Money. It's very easy to find on Netflix and you can check it there. But uh, I, I just thought it was interesting that, uh, of course, Roaring Kitty hadn't posted anything from June 18th, 20, 2021, which is a very nice picture, actually. And this was his picture and it made everything just go crazy. It went bonkers. AMC, GameStop, I think it's up over 120% uh, in 24 hours just by an image. And that just shows you the power that the individual has as opposed to being separate. But of course, Jay Clayton has to come on and talk about just how uh, awful this actually is. And when you listen to this, listen to his response. And I want to remind you that the stock market had to stop nine times during trading sessions because of the volatility. And you want to tell me that's a little bit of not just volatility, but manipulation? I don't know what else to tell you. So I want you to hear this in uh, crystal clear as much as we possibly can. So let me bring this up and you can listen to Jay talk for about a minute and what he has to say. So just take a listen to this. It's not insider trading. That's, that's, that's clear. I'm Let's see. And he's trading on his own information. That's why it's not in insider trading. But is this is this something that we should be tolerating in our markets? You know, whether it's legal or illegal, I don't think so. And that's why I say, why doesn't he, you know, what does that mean very, not to tolerate? Was, so the idea I would think is you look at this more in the context of market manipulation. Mm -hmm. Right. And the question is, are you allowed to manipulate the market? People, by the way, publish things all the time and they say, hey, I like this stock and they you know, hope that other folks follow them. Is that market manipulation? Gen generally not. Maybe, maybe, generally maybe not. not. So what is the distinction in your mind as somebody who ran this department and who's looking at and cares about the integrity of these markets? Well, that's why, that's why I'm saying, okay, we can, we can discuss what are exactly the facts and circumstances around the publication right. of this tweet and the like. But in, but in the meantime, if you care about the markets and you care about investing, come on this program. Right. Tell people, tell people why you did this from What's your up? lips. God bless you. We hope he does. Ugh. Jay put on his tap dancing shoes to answer that question because really he got caught. He said essentially like, hey, this is market manipulation. You can't do that. And the host just told him like this happens all the time. And I will remind everybody that the markets, I hate to tell everybody this. If you don't know, the markets actually get manipulated quite a bit. And there are people in higher positions, there are market makers, there are people asking for friends or favors from their congressional friends. Take a look at Nancy Pelosi, X, Y, Z. The markets get manipulated a ton. And when the higher ups get hurt, all of a sudden it's like, we need to control this. But as they're doing it, as they've been all doing it for quite some time, uh, it's, it's all of a sudden like, ah, we should let that happen. It's not a big deal. But of course, then they get hurt and here we are. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But I will tell you this. GameStop is up and I actually forgot this. I thought it was 120, but it's 230%. Actually, this is GME. I should, excuse me. This is a Solana. This is a Solana meme coin called GME. It's up 230%. Doge, which is the first meme coin. Never forget 7.8%, Shiba up 2.8%, Pepe up 23%, Dog with Hat plus six, Floki 15 and Bonk at plus 4.5. And I know some people get ticked off at this, probably because they haven't invested in memes, that's fine. But to me, I say, congratulations. Congratulations to everybody who invested in meme coins and said, you know what, I like this. I like this and I know it's gambling and I'm gonna get into it. We should all realize that's exactly what it is. Don't hate, people had risks. And they went in risky and they said, this is what I'm going to do. 
And I will say, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, with meme coins, sometimes it's a little bit different. Not in all of them, but in a lot of them, especially the new ones that are coming out. What's great about it is that VCs can't get in. Well, they can get in, but there's no pre-seed, seed, or private rounds for them to gobble up all these tokens and then dump them on you later. And I think that's why, that's the allure of the meme coin. But I want everybody to, to remind everybody uh, that is, with meme coins, it's risky, it's gambling. If you made some profits, make sure to take some profits. We got some rules, I think you know them all, the five rules. And I think as time goes on, maybe you should take a look at that and go, you know what? Maybe this won't go to 100X or 200X or do 1,000X. Maybe I should take some funds off the table before everything starts to go down or maybe even collapse. Just here to say that, because I've seen it all before and I just want everybody to be protected. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. So that will take care of the meme coins and what's going on. Of course, you have to be the deciding factor of what you want to do. But let's take a look at, <laughs> I guess I, I can't call this traditional finance, traditional cryptocurrency finance, we should say, ETFs. So this was the big buzz. Uh, I think this was on April 30th was the first day of, uh, of trading for the Hong Kong Bitcoin ETF. But now it looks like Hong Kong Bitcoin and E3 ETFs see a combined 39 million outflows on Monday. On this channel, I don't like to give you all the, uh, all the hype and the moon boy stuff. Let's bring it back to reality. So... In Hong Kong, a combined 32.7 million was outflowed on Monday from these ETFs. Monday marked the first time that all six crypto ETFs, including Bitcoin and Ether, reported negative flows since their launch on May 2nd. But don't be too concerned because it's not like there's a ton of money floating around there. Hong Kong-based ETF markets is small. It only has 50 billion in assets, which I gotta say is pretty big for me. However, if you take a look at that as far as the United States, the ETF market in the United States is estimated at approximately $9 trillion in assets under management. Let me say that again. ETF market, US, $9 trillion assets under management. So I know when people say, well, who gives, who cares about America and what they're doing, all the laws they're passing and they're, they're screwing over their, their people? We care because it's the most amount of money that's centralized in this one country. So with this, you got to understand that, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of what's going on either, but a lot of a lot of funds to come in. And then lastly, I didn't hear about this, but maybe I've maybe this has been a concern to you. Just so you know, rumors suggested that mainland Chinese investors had gained access to the funds via Stock Connect, meaning mainland China. Hong Kong is not part of mainland China. Uh, two countries, one system, or excuse me, two systems, one country. So with this, they were thinking that mainland China investors actually got access to it, but this has been disproved. Of course, they talk about which would open for gates for a far bigger investor base, but Hong Kong Stock Exchange told Coindesk that their rumor was false. So there wasn't more money coming in. This was relegated to Hong Kong only, not mainland China. So that is on that end. However, remember, good news, and this is all I really care about. People really get dig, big into the, the Bitcoin ETF flows. This is all I care about. See over here on January 16th, when it was negative at some point. Actually, yeah, right here, January 24th. It's not over here. That's all I care about. There was, I, I know people will talk about, well, you know, Grayscale, they, they, they minimize their outflows and it's gonna reverse. That's fantastic, that's great. But just so you know, this Bitcoin ETF is the best performing ETF of all time. Let me say that again. This ETF, is the best performing ETF of all time in traditional finance. And we're still positive. So if, as Grayscale starts to minimize those flows, uh, I think we're in the right place at the right time, like I've always said. And then on top of that, I just saw this from Mark Yusko. And uh, give him a follow, fine gentleman, good guy, CEO and CIO of uh, Morgan Creep Investments. And this is actually from Bitcoin Magazine that he reposted, the state of Wisconsin investment board discloses it holds almost $100 million of BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. Let me say that one more time. State of Wisconsin Investment Board disclosed it holds almost $100 million of BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF. I have to applaud them because that was doing their due diligence and their own research to figure out that this was the best option for them. I will say this. I congratulate them because... What happens in a massive bull market is people lose their mind. It's gonna, it happened before, it's gonna happen again. So Wisconsin made the right choice. You know who didn't make the right choice? Quebec. And I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention just to bring you back to reality a little bit. 
and remind you of what it was. On December 21st, 2022, this was an article put out by federal retirees. It talks about crypto hype cost Quebec pension plan $150 million. $150 million. What do they do? Let me read this. In 2021, the Casa des Depots, et Place de Quebec, I nailed that. The organization responsible for investing the funds of the Quebec pension plan and other public sectors plans in Quebec invested nearly $150 million. U.S. in cryptocurrency Celsius network. Celsius network. Celsius, the biggest Ponzi scheme, calling it the world's leading crypto lender with a strong management team that puts transparency and customer protection at the core of its operations. Now, I can't blame him because I had Alex Mashinsky on this show three times and he lied right to my face. But I want to remind you, as time has gone on, look to those investments and those projects that have not failed that have been battle tested, that have gone through everything and wars and back again, that have battled it out in the bear market and are thriving in the bull and take a look at that and maybe do a little bit soul searching to what you wanna invest in. Anyhow, so on top of that, uh, another, another great piece for Bitcoin, Switzerland's largest bank, UBS Group AG, disclosed spot Bitcoin ETF holdings. In the US. So Switzerland Bank. And then, of course, we talked about JP Morgan as well. So everybody's investing in this. And then also, I don't know who this gentleman is, but like I said, not all heroes wear capes. U.S. state representative uh, asked whether New Hampshire should allocate Bitcoin to its strategic reserves. I got to tell you, you can't do worse than what Quebec did. So I'm going to say yes. And to finish this up before we get into the q and I just want to just roll some things out as far as where things are going. I'm not big on price predictions. I suck at them. I think everybody sucks at them, quite honestly. But if we take a look at trend lines, this is from Ben's website. I steal it from him as much as possible. Where is where's the price of Bitcoin going? Where is the adoption going? It's up and to the right. I don't know how fast it's going to go. I don't know if it's going to be here in 2050, 2080, or 2025 but we're going the right direction. This is the uh, crypto market cap and tread line. Also, we take a look at a logarithmic re regression. We are right, let me blow this up. We're right square plumb in the middle of where we should be as far as the non-bubble, or excuse me, the bubble lower band, non-bubble. And of course, coming up here, we'll probably get there at some point. So again, up and to the right. Even if we look at the, for Pete's sakes, the Bitcoin rainbow price indicator, where is it going? It's going this way. And I like to see that. And there's a new one that people have been harping on me to uh, take a look at. And I haven't really done a ton of research, but it looks great. It's called the Bitcoin Power Law Theory. And I linked this Medium article in the description so you can read this whole thing. But basically, it just goes like this. It takes a look at price, hash rate, addresses, and time. And it takes a look at where things are going for Bitcoin. If you take a look at all those things and just extrapolate that data, this is it. And where is it going? It's going up and to the right. So again, I don't know what you're invested into. Me personally, my portfolio is still 70% Bitcoin. Yeah, I got some altcoins. Yeah, I got some meme coins. But where are we going here? It's looking pretty good. And I can't tell you it's going to do this. I'm just telling you that I like where things are going. And I still say we're in the right place at the right time. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.